Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing a deep dive on uh, drop shipping on Amazon. Especially for beginners. Yeah, especially for beginners. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I've done drop shipping before, not on Amazon though. Okay. And uh, I've, I've looked into it, but there are a lot of complexities mm. and things can get you suspended from Amazon pretty easily. Yeah. Definitely. And so that's why you're here. That's right. Yeah. To to help us break it all down and yeah. give people the knowledge that they need so they can go out and and decide if drop shipping is right for them. Yeah. Um so just to start off for the for the truly uninitiated. Yeah. Uh how would you define drop shipping? Just a real basic definition of it. Sure. Yeah, it's basically when you list a product on Amazon, a customer buys it from you and then yeah. you go to your supplier and purchase it from your supplier and they ship it directly to the customer. So you never actually touch yeah. it. You never touch it. That's why it's so appealing to a lot of people. Yeah, it's really appealing. It's like you don't have to buy inventory up front and uh, you know, you don't have to really do much work other than get the listing up there and market it. Right. But that's where a lot of the a lot of the work and nuance comes in because Amazon's uh, got yeah. rules. Yeah, and it's changed a lot recently. Yeah. In the last couple of years, they they've really tightened down on drop shipping because there were so many people doing it and it was getting out of control. Oh yeah. So um it's definitely still possible. Absolutely. You can still make money drop shipping on Amazon. You just have to do it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta follow the rules. Yeah. And so that's what we wanna we wanna help people figure out. Exactly. So looking at our sources here, um, one of the big things is you, you gotta be careful about the branding. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit more for people? Yeah. So uh your branding has to be on everything. Okay. So when that package is shipped from your supplier to the customer, okay. your business name needs to be on the packaging. Okay. It needs to be on the packing slip on any invoices that are included. So like if I found like a, a toy, for example, on walmart.com yeah. for a really good price, Yay. could I just like set up a, a listing on Amazon and have it drop ship from Walmart? No, you couldn't. Yeah. Okay. Because it's going to have Walmart. It's going to have Walmart's branding all over it. All over it. Yeah. Okay. So it's not really considered drop shipping. It's considered like retail arbitrage or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, you can't do that. Okay. So we you need to find a supplier who's willing to put your branding on the package. Okay. So that already eliminates a huge number of potential products then. It does eliminate a lot of products. Yeah. But there's still plenty of suppliers out there. <laughs> okay. Who are willing to do this. Okay. Because they know that's how Amazon works. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's worth doing it the right way. It's definitely worth doing it the right way. Okay. Um, now, what about returns? Because that seems like it would be a tricky thing. Returns are tricky, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the main thing with returns is that you're responsible for them. So you can't just tell the customer to return it to the supplier. Okay. Because Amazon considers you the seller. Right. So you need to have your return address listed in your Amazon account. So if they want to return it, it goes back to me, and then I have to figure it out with a supplier. Exactly. This, great. this can be tricky. Yeah. But there are ways to streamline that process. Okay. We can talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then there's also just all of the other Amazon rules that we got. Oh, well, yeah. There's a million, yeah, million really, too, right? There's so many rules. Yeah. It's not just the drop shipping rule. It's it's not just the drop shipping that, policy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to follow all the other rules, too. Are there are there any kind of common ones that, that maybe drop shippers might, might get tripped up on? Yeah. Um, one of the big ones is the product authenticity policy. Okay. So you got to make sure that you're selling authentic products. You're not selling counterfeit products. Okay. Um, and sometimes drop shippers get tripped up on this because they're sourcing from suppliers who are not reputable. Okay. And they may not know that they're selling counterfeit products. Gotcha. So so do your research. Definitely do your research. On the right product here. and make sure it's a... On the product and on the supplier. Okay. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Um. So once you've got those rules down, Pat, like where do you even find these suppliers that are willing to to play ball with all of this? Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously you can't just go to Walmart or Target right. and drop ship from them. Right. Um, so there are websites out there that are specifically for drop shippers. OK. Um, two of the most popular ones are AliExpress. OK. I've heard of that one. And CJ Drop Shipping. OK. Um, so these websites have tons of suppliers from all over the world. OK. And a lot of them are willing to drop ship for you and put your branding on the package. Now, one of the things that has always kind of put me off about AliExpress is the the shipping times can be so long. Yes, that is a concern. And so if people are, you know, used to ordering things from Amazon and getting it in two days, right. are they going to be okay with waiting, you know, a month 
for something to come from China. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Um, so one of the things you can do is you can filter your search results on AliExpress okay. and CJ Dropshipping okay. to only show suppliers who are located in the United States. Oh, okay. So that way the shipping times are much faster. So there are U.S.-based suppliers on those websites? There are, yeah. Okay, that's good to know. I did not know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Okay, so now the fun part. Let's talk about products. Yes, product research. Yeah, so I, I've been on AliExpress just, you know, browsing around, and it's so overwhelming. It is overwhelming. There's so many products. So many products. How do you even decide where to begin? Right. Yeah, it's yeah. like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the best place to start is actually not on AliExpress or any of those supplier websites. Okay. It's on Amazon itself. Okay. So you want to see what's already selling well on Amazon? Okay, so look at, like, the best sellers lists. Exactly. Stuff like that. Look at the best sellers list. Look at new releases. Okay. Um, look at what's trending in different categories. So instead of trying to guess what might sell, see what's already selling. Exactly. Okay. Because Amazon already has millions of customers. Right. And they're already buying stuff. So uh, you can use that data to your advantage. Okay. So then, so then once you've got some ideas, what kind of tools do you use to sort of refine that and figure out, you know, the numbers and all of that? Yeah. So... There are a lot of different tools out there. Um, one of the ones that I recommend is Jungle Scout. Okay, I've heard of Jungle Scout, yeah. Yeah, so Jungle Scout is a really powerful tool that allows you to see how many units a product is selling per day. Okay. Um, it allows you to see the estimated revenue. Oh. Um, and it also has a really cool feature called Opportunity Finder. Okay, what is that? So Opportunity Finder allows you to filter for products that have high demand, low competition, okay. and good profit margins. That sounds like a dream. It is a dream, yeah. So you're not just looking at what's selling well, you're looking at what's selling well. Right. That doesn't have a lot of other people already in there. Exactly. Repeating for the buy box. Yeah, so it's really helpful for finding those hidden gems. Yeah, yeah. So so is there is there like a, a free version of Jungle Scout and then a paid version, or how does that work? Yeah, so there is a free version, Okay. which is just the sales estimator. Okay. So you can put in a product and it'll give you an estimate of how many units it's selling. Okay. Um. But the paid version is much more powerful because okay. it gives you access to all of those filters okay. and to Opportunity Finder. Okay. Um, so if you're serious about drop shipping on Amazon, okay. I highly recommend investing in the paid version. Okay, cool. Um, and then speaking of investing, let's talk about profit. Yes, profit. Because at the end of the day, that's why we're all doing this right. That's why we're here, yeah. So how do we, how do we figure out you know, what our potential profit might be. And is Jungle Scout useful for that too? Yeah, Jungle Scout is really useful for that. Um, so you can look at the estimated revenue for a product okay. and then you can subtract your costs. Okay. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that the FBA fee that Jungle Scout shows you well, yeah. doesn't apply to dropshippers. Okay, why not? Because you're not actually sending any inventory to Amazon. Okay. So you're not paying that fee. So it's just the the cost of the goods from the supplier plus whatever they're charging me for shipping. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's important to factor that in okay. when you're calculating your profit. Do you have any kind of real world examples from from our sources here about, you know, potential profits or anything like that? Yeah. So um one of the sources mentions a product that costs nine dollars to source okay. from a supplier. Okay. And it sells for twenty two dollars on Amazon. Okay. So after all the fees and everything, okay. the profit margin is over a hundred percent. Yeah. So there's definitely potential to make good money. 100% profit margin. That's incredible. It is incredible, yeah. But I'm sure it's not always that easy. It's not always that easy. No. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it depends on the product. It depends on the competition. Right. Um, but there are definitely products out there okay. where you can make really good profit margins. Okay. So we got to find those gems. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so for more great tips on building an online business, make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. So let's say I've got my product in mind, I've got my you know, profit margins all figured out, and I'm on these supplier websites like AliExpress. Yeah. What, what am I looking for when I'm trying to figure out a good supplier? Yes. Yeah, so um, first of all, you want to make sure that they actually offer dropshipping services. Okay. So it'll actually say that... It should say that on their website. Okay. Um, you know, some suppliers don't offer dropshipping. Okay. So you want to make sure that they do. 
Okay. Um, and then you also want to make sure that they're willing to ship without their branding. Okay. So no like little invoices or packing slips or... No invoices, no packing slips. Nothing with their name on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you also want to look at their return policy. Okay. Um, because you're going to be responsible for returns. Mm. So you want to make sure that they have a good return policy. Okay. Um, and then you also want to look at their processing times. Okay. Um, because you want to make sure that they can ship orders out quickly. Yeah, people yeah. don't want to wait. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So now this is all based on what their website says. Right. Right. What's the best way to kind of validate that and make sure that they're actually going to do what they say they're going to do? The best way to do that is to order a sample. Okay. So you order a sample of the product. You mean like I actually buy it from them? Yeah, you actually buy it from them. Okay. And then you see how long it takes to ship. Okay. You yeah. see how it's packaged. Okay. You see the quality of the product. So I can see if it's all, you know, if it matches what the website says. Exactly. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's really important to do that. Okay, so now I've got my supplier, I've got my product, and I'm ready to create a listing on Amazon. Yes. Um, what do I need to know about that? Okay, so um, the first thing you need to know is that there are two different fulfillment methods on Amazon. Okay. There's FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. Okay. And there's FBM, which is fulfilled by Merchant. Okay, but didn't we already say that FBA fees don't apply to dropshippers? That's right. Okay. So, Where? so dropshippers use FBM. Okay. Because they're not sending their inventory to Amazon. Okay. They're having the supplier ship it directly to the customer. So FBM is fulfilled by Merchant but it's actually being fulfilled by my supplier. Right, but you're the merchant. Okay. So you're responsible for making sure that the order gets fulfilled. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna get into all of the, the nitty gritty of creating that FBM listing in our next deep dive. Exactly. Um, but are there any other sort of bonus tips from, from our sources that we can give people to kind of help them streamline this whole process? Yeah. Um, one of the sources mentions using Pinterest for keyword research. Pinterest, really? Yeah. Okay, I thought Pinterest was just for, you know, recipes and... It is for that. Crafts. Yeah. What does it have to do with drop shipping on Amazon? So people on Pinterest use very specific keywords when they're searching for products. Okay. And you can use those keywords to your advantage okay. when you're creating your Amazon listing. Oh, so like I'm selling kitchen gadgets, for example. Yeah. I could go on Pinterest and see what people are searching for when they're looking, looking for those. It. Yeah. Okay. And then use those same keywords okay. in your Amazon listing. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a really helpful tip. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Um, another tip is to use a wholesale price sheet scanner tool. Okay, what is that? So a lot of suppliers will send you a price sheet yeah. that has all of their products on it, okay. and there are wholesale prices. Yeah. And it can be really time consuming to go through that price sheet right. and compare the prices to what similar products are selling for on Amazon. Right. So a wholesale price sheet scanner tool okay. will do that for you automatically. Okay. So you just upload the price sheet okay. and it'll scan it and it'll tell you which products are profitable right. and what their sales rank is on Amazon. So it's like it's like automation for finding profitable products. Yeah, exactly. Boy. That's amazing. Yeah. It's a really helpful tool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um so I think we've we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, definitely. But there's one more thing that we need to talk about before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, and that's taxes. Yes, taxes. Nobody likes to talk about taxes. I know. But it's important. It's important. Yeah. Um, so what what do people need to know about sales tax when it comes to drop shipping? So if you're working with US based wholesale suppliers, okay. you're going to need a resale certificate. Okay, what's a resale certificate? So a resale certificate is a document that allows you to buy products from your supplier tax-free. Okay. Because you're going to be reselling those products to your customers. Okay. And you're going to be collecting sales tax from your customers. So I collect the sales tax from the customer. Right. And then I pay it to the state. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now, does Amazon handle sales tax in any states or is that always on me? So Amazon does handle sales tax in some states, okay. but not all states. Okay. So it's important to check your state's laws okay. and make sure that you're complying with them. So even if Amazon says they're handling it, I still might have some responsibility. You still might have some responsibility. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. It's always good to talk to a tax professional. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, okay. So for more great tips on building an online business, make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. 
and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for, this is in Brian's YouTube bio, so I think we've we've laid a good foundation here. Yes, certainly. Um, we've talked about all of the, the kind of basics that people need to know to get started with dropshipping. Yeah. Um, and in our next deep dive, we're going to actually walk people through the process of creating an FBM listing on Amazon. Exactly. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yes. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. All right. So we left off talking about creating your FBM listing. Yeah, that's kind of the next step in this whole journey. Exactly. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get kind of overwhelmed at this point because they're like, OK. It's real now. Yeah, it's getting real. I have to actually create this thing. Yeah. Um, but it's not as complicated as it seems. OK, good. So let's walk through it step by step. Okay, sounds good. So the first thing you're going to do is log into your Amazon Seller Central account. Okay, so that's where all the magic happens. Yeah, that's your command center for your Amazon business. Okay, and I should already have that set up right from the, the, the last deep dive. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You should have already created your account. Perfect. Okay, so I'm logged in. Okay, so once you're logged in, you're going to hover over the inventory tab right. and then select Add a Product. Okay, Add a Product. Got it. And that's going to take you to a page where you can either search for an existing product or create a new product. Okay, so what's the difference? So if you search for an existing product, you're basically saying, I want to sell this product that's already being sold on Amazon. Okay. So you're joining a listing that already exists. So it's kind of like piggybacking on, on someone else's success. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, and then if you create a new product, you're basically saying, I have this unique product that nobody else is selling on Amazon. Okay, so that's more complicated. Yeah, a little bit more complicated, yeah. Yeah. Um, so for beginners, I usually recommend searching for an existing product. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because okay. it's just easier. Yeah, baby steps. Baby steps, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to search for an existing product. Now, presumably, I've already done my product research. Right using Jungle Scout, so I know what I'm looking for. Exactly, yeah. So you should already know what product you want to sell. Okay, so can I just like type in the name of the product there? You can, but there's a better way to do it. Okay. So every product on Amazon has what's called an AS. An AS sign. Okay, what is that? So AS sign stands for Amazon Standard Identification Number. Oh, yeah. It's basically like a unique ID for each product. Okay. So if you know the AS sign of the product that you want to sell, okay. you can just type that in. Okay. And where do I find the AS sign? So the AS sign is in the URL of the product page on Amazon. Oh, okay. So I just copy and paste that code. Exactly. Okay, yeah. cool. So yeah, that's the easiest way to find the product that you want to sell. Awesome. Okay. So I've typed in the AS sign. I found my product. What do I do now? Okay. So you're going to click on the button that says sell yours. Okay. Found it. All right. And that's going to take you to the listing creation page. Okay. So now I'm looking at a bunch of different fields that I need to fill out. Right. Okay. So walk me through this. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is select the condition of your product. Okay. And I'm assuming since we're drop shipping, it's always going to be new. Yes, exactly. Yeah, enough. Um, and then you're going to enter the quantity that you have available to sell. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because I don't actually have any inventory on hand. Right. So how do I know a quantity to put? So there are a couple different schools of thought on this. Okay. Um, some people recommend putting a low quantity, okay. like 10 or 20, okay. just to be safe. Yeah, so you don't oversell. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, other people recommend putting a higher quantity, okay. like 100 or 200. Okay. Um, but that's a little bit riskier. Yeah, if you don't actually have that many. Right. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on your risk tolerance and your confidence in your supplier. Okay. I think I'm going to go with, the low quantity for now. Okay. That's probably a good idea for your first listing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I've got my quantity. What's next? Okay. So next you're going to set your price. Okay. Now this is important. Yeah. This is very important. Because this is how I make money. Exactly. And this also determines whether or not you win the buy box. The buy box. Yeah. What is that? So the buy box is that little box on the right side of the product page. Okay. That says add to cart. Okay. And whoever wins the buy box is the default seller. Oh, so that's how you get the most sales. Exactly. Okay. So it's really important to win the buy box. So how do I do that? So there are a few factors that go into winning the buy box. Right, because then I'm not making any money. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so it's a balance. It's a balance, yeah. Okay. Um, any tips on how to price things? Yeah, so um, one strategy is to match the lowest price. 
Okay. That's already being offered. Okay. Um, that'll give you a good chance of winning the buy box. Okay. Um, and then once you've won the buy box a few times, okay, you can start to experiment with raising your price a little bit. Oh, uh, so kind of test it out. Yeah, test it out. See how high you can go. Okay, cool. Um, and then the next thing you're going to do is set your handling time. Okay, handling time. Now, I thought my supplier was handling all of that. So your supplier is handling the actual shipping. Okay. But the handling time is the amount of time that it takes you to process the order. Okay. So basically how long it takes you to tell your supplier to ship the product. Okay. So it includes the supplier's processing time too. Exactly. Yeah. So know. you need to talk to your supplier and find out what their average processing time is. Okay. And then you need to factor in a little bit of buffer time. A buffer. Why? Just in case there are any delays. Okay. So like things happen. Things happen. Yeah. Okay. So it's always good to have a little bit of extra time. Okay. So if my supplier says it takes two days. Yeah. Maybe you put three in there just to be safe. Exactly. Okay. And then the next thing you're going to do is select your shipping template. Okay. And we talked about that last time. We did. Yeah. So that's all set up. Hopefully you already have your shipping template set up. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my price. I've got my handling time. Mm -hmm. I've got my shipping template. What else is there? Okay, so now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Okay, good. Which is making your listing look good. Yes, because we got to track those buyers. We got to make it stand out. Yes. So the first thing is product images. Okay, now can I just use the images that my supplier provides? You can, but I don't recommend it. Okay, one. So if you use the same images that everybody else is using, okay, your listing is not going to stand out. Right. It's going to look like everybody else's. Yeah. Head. Exactly. Yeah. So got you it. really want to invest in your own unique product photos. So hire a photographer? Or? Yeah, you can hire a photographer. Okay. Um, you can take your own photos if you're good at photography. Cool. Um, there are also websites where you can buy stock photos. Okay. Um, but yeah, you really want to make sure that your product photos are high quality. Okay. And that they stand out. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, now, what about the actual words on the listing? Yes. Yeah, so this is where keywords come in. Keywords. Yeah, those are a bit very important. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're using relevant keywords in your product title. Okay. And in your product description. Okay. So that when people search for those keywords on Amazon, okay. your listing will show up. Okay. So it's all about getting found. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now I know I can't just like stuff a bunch of keywords in there. Right. It has to sound natural. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any tips on how to write good copy for Amazon? Yeah. So um, one tip is to use bullet points. Um, because people are busy. Okay. They don't want to read big blocks of text. Right. Got to get to the point. Exactly. Yeah. So bullet points are a great way to highlight the key features and benefits of your product. Okay, cool. Um, anything else I need to know about writing good copy? Um, yeah, make sure that you proofread everything carefully. Yeah. Um, you don't want any typos or grammatical errors in your listing. Right. First impressions are important. Exactly. Okay. Um, is there anything else I could do to kind of make my listing look even better? Yeah, so Amazon has a feature called A plus content. Okay, I've heard of that, but I don't really know what it is. So A plus content allows you to add enhanced images and text to your listing. Okay. Um, so you can add things like comparison charts, oh. lifestyle images. Oh. Um, you can even add videos. Wow. So it's a really great way to make your listing stand out. And look more professional. Exactly. Okay, so how do I create a plus content. So there's a separate section in Seller Central for A plus content. Okay. Um, and it's pretty easy to use. Okay. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, definitely check it out. Okay. So I think I've got everything now. Okay. My images, my copy, my A plus content. I'm ready to hit publish, right? Almost. Okay. What am I missing? So before you hit publish, make sure that you double check everything. Okay. Make sure your price is right. Make sure your handling time is right. Make sure your shipping template is right. Okay, so review all the settings. Review all the settings, make sure everything is accurate. Okay. And then once you're confident that everything is correct, okay, then you can hit publish. Awesome. I'm so excited to get this listing live. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Okay, so once my listing is live, what happens next? So we're going to talk about that in our next deep dive. Okay. We're going to talk about what happens when you get your first sale. Okay. And how to fulfill that order. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, so now we're in the home stretch. We talked about finding the right products, vetting suppliers, creating that killer listing. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for the moment of truth, getting those first orders. Exactly. That's when all that hard work starts to pay off. It's getting real now, though. I'm a little nervous, I've got to admit. Probably understandable. Yeah, like, what do I actually DO when an order comes in? Okay, deep breaths. 
Let's break it down step by step. Okay, sounds good. First things first, you're going to get a notification from Amazon. Could be an email or a little alert in your Seller Central dashboard. Okay, got it. And that's when you head over to your orders page in Seller Central. Okay, heading over there now. What am I looking for exactly? You'll see all the details about the order, the customer's name, their shipping address, what they ordered, how much they paid, everything you need. Okay, yeah, seeing all that, it's kind of exciting. It is exciting. This is what it's all about. Yeah, so what do I do next? Do I email my supplier and say, hey, I've got an order? Well, you could, but a lot of suppliers who are used to working with drop shippers have even easier ways to handle this. Like, they might have a special portal just for drop shipping orders or an online form you can fill out. Wow, that's even easier. Exactly. Super streamlined. So I basically just put in the customer's info and the product they ordered and dot bam. Pretty much. Of course, you'll also need to take care of payment. Right. How does that usually work? Most suppliers accept credit cards or PayPal, the usual suspects. You want to set that up with them ahead of time so you're ready to go when orders come in. Okay, got it. So I've placed the order with my supplier, double check the shipping address, everything looks good. Perfect. Just one more crucial piece of information you'll need. Okay, lay it on me. The tracking number. Oh, right. Of course. So the customer can track their package. Exactly. Everyone loves to see where their stuff is. Well, why do I need to worry about that? Doesn't right. the supplier just take care of it? They do. But remember, yeah. you are the one who the customer bought from on Amazon. Sure. So you need to keep them informed. And having that tracking number is also really important if, say, a customer contacts you saying they never got their package. Oh. So I've got proof that it was actually shipped. Exactly. Protects both you and the customer. Okay, so how do I get that tracking number? Your supplier will usually email it to you once they've shipped the order. Awesome. Then I head back to Seller Central and... Yep. Go to your orders page, find the order, and there's a button to confirm shipment. Okay, finding it. You'll put in the tracking number, select the shipping carrier, and that's it. Amazon takes it from there. So easy. Do I just sit back and relax now? Well, it pretty hands-off at this point, but it's still a good idea to keep an eye on things. You mean like stock the tracking info? Not quite stalking, but you know, just check in every now and then to make sure everything is moving smoothly. Mm. Sometimes packages get delayed or an address needs to be corrected. Things happen. Makes sense. And if you're on top of it, you can often resolve those issues quickly. So I'm like the customer's package guardian. That's a great way to put it. You're ensuring a smooth and positive experience, even though you're not physically involved in the shipping. I like it. And then once the package is delivered. You get paid. Amazon will deposit the funds into your account, minus their fees, of course. Sweet. Profits at last. That's right. But it doesn't end there. Wait, there's more. Just one more tip for amazing customer service. Follow up with the buyer after they've received their order. Really? Like what? Send them a thank you note. An email is perfect. Just a quick message thanking them for their purchase, asking if they have any questions or feedback. It makes a big difference. That's a good idea. Shows you care, even if you never touch the product. Exactly. And you're building relationships, which can lead to repeat customers the best kind. Right. Word of mouth marketing is priceless. Okay, so we've done it. We've covered the entire drop shipping process from product research to those happy customer emails. I'm so proud of you. You're officially a drop shipping ninja. Huh. I don't know about that. But I feel so much more confident now. I actually think I might give this a try. That's awesome. Remember, for more great tips on building an online business, make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. And most importantly, don't be afraid to experiment and learn as you go. Experiment and learn. Love that advice. Well, folks, that's it for our deep dive into dropshipping on Amazon. Hopefully you found it helpful. Yeah, we covered a ton of information. But remember, this is just the starting point. Your dropshipping journey is just beginning. Absolutely. Keep learning, keep exploring, and most importantly, keep that entrepreneurial spirit burning bright. Couldn't have said it better myself. Until next time, happy dropshipping, everyone. Happy dropshipping.